Hey guys, Rukshan here coming to you live from Melbourne. Good, how are you doing? I'm at the uh, Let Women Let Women Speak event covering this. And you've got a uh, a few issues there with uh, Antifa trying to crash the event. There you go, COVID! We are here to protect the children. We have had enough of the government sexualizing children. Okay, we're we are here to protect the women. Parliament steps this morning, Saturday morning. We've been protesting every week for the last three years. There's plenty of action here. Today's focus with is pro protecting children, women, and anti. We are against the indoctrination of children by our trans agenda. And trans agenda is pretty, pretty full on. Plus, we've got extreme right. Yeah, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got anti anti uh, trans. So confusing. This is like a couple of different groups, a few different groups here. So these are kind of like pro trans, I should say, pro trans agenda. We've got women's rights group here. Keep prison single sex. Trans is a lie. Same sex attraction isn't transphobic. All right. We got that stuff. We got our rally over here, which is buried, which is the freedom. Wait. Harvey, I don't know. Have you seen him? Have you seen Harvey? I don't know. Should be here. He should be working. So as you can see, a, a bit of tension here, guys. A few arrests already. So pretty much we got uh, people who are speaking for women's rights here. No men in women's sports. Let women speak. It's a... And then on the other side, you've got... Um, you've got activists. Uh, you've got members of Antifa. Uh, speaking on behalf of 
uh, the trans community here in uh, Melbourne, Victoria. What's that? Tell me, bro, tell me. Where are they? So, what? Yeah, they were doing Nazis. So, on this side, guys, we've got what the activists are telling me are Nazis or members of the far right. And they're holding a sign that says destroy pedo freaks. Okay. coming down here, or are they going to try and keep keep some of them away anyway? But I heard there was supposed to be another um, another bunch of them collecting in the uh, gardens just behind us up in uh, Carlton Gardens there. There was about three or four hundred responses to the event invitation for the uh, lefties to meet up there and come down here, so I don't know. And um, it was dealing dealing with the issues around gender gender issues, particularly around women's rights as it pertains to uh, you know what we're seeing today in our society where a lot of uh, trans trans people are becoming involved in women's sports uh, are being uh, allowed into women's bathrooms and so forth so that's what this side is that I'm pointing to right now and on the other side of the camera where there's a police cordon is the uh, 
pro trans, I guess, pro LGBTQI, um, and activist, Antifa, a whole mix of everything here. So, police line here, there's a cordon. So there has already been a few small scuffles. Um, so you have elements of the extreme far left here, which I would say is Antifa. And on the other side, you also have elements, uh, yeah. which I would say is possibly uh, the far right. So both groups are here and the uh, police are keeping them, keeping them apart because they did try to infiltrate before. Thoughts about all this? Well, look, you know, everyone's got a right to protest, but I, I just don't think half these people are actually really listening to what anyone's saying. We, right. don't, we don't oppose to trans anyone. Right. We do oppose to the medicalisation of kids and the usurping of women's rights and women's safe spaces. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple and quite reasonable, you'd think. Uh, Absolutely. You know? So, but they're pushing back against that. They don't yeah. want that. Well, they want it all or nothing. And you know, the LGB is certainly not standing with the T on this one. No. I've been a lesbian all my life, and yep. trans friends, trannies forever and a day. Yeah, sure. I'm 65. Yep. And I've never seen anything as outrageous as this. Yeah. Any any trannies that I've ever known would never do this. Would never do this to women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think the the state government is behind this a little bit too? I what are your thoughts? You do. I absolutely do. Yeah. Who invests fifty? million dollars in a pride centre that lesbians can't use. <laughs> Go figure, right? Go figure. Yeah, thanks mate. Cheers. This lady's just telling us why she's there. Oh, hang on, there's some activity happening down there. So a few Nazi salutes here, we got Antifa here.
what the, what, what's, the, what's the problem? I'm doing media, man.
So guys, I'm here at Parliament House here. There's a, it was a scheduled event that's pretty much been hijacked by counter protesters from two sides, uh, the far right, the far left. And then you have activists in the middle who are either advocating for trans rights or speaking up um, for women's, women's rights. So yeah, so what you just saw before what I was filming was, so what you saw was really uh, two elements there, the far left and the far right, facing each other off here in Melbourne on the streets. And uh, and uh, you saw it got very heated there, but the police have uh, really cordoned that area off. And here is actual uh, talkers were meant to actually be here, but it's very loud. I don't know when the speeches are starting, but... So this is probably a great example of how there are extremes uh, within any movement and uh, how that can, in a way, derail the message, whichever side is trying to speak. Because down here it's very calm, at the moment anyway. And we're going to see these lovely people. Let me just show you my face. Hi. Uh, so we're going to see these lovely people in a minute. You ready? Uh, looks a bit frozen. Um, has the live stream started yet? <laughs> this is the live stream. Someone just commented on my live stream. Has the live stream started yet? <laughs> what was this? Oh, uh, okay. So. Me and Moira. <laughs> so excited to be here with you. Thank you for coming out. Well, it's so good. Awesome. <laughs> what fabulous t shirts she's wearing. It is so nice. It's comfortable, it's very high quality, it's very good value for money. I suggest you all go out and get this one. <laughs> it's not very often you get endorsed by an MP. So we're just waiting for a little bit. There's lots of police. Um, we could mention again, like we hope to see the Minister for Women here. So Natalie Hutchins, the Minister for Women, you got my invite, I know, so I hope to see you here today so you can come and listen to women with me. Of course she'll be here, because she's I mean, it's a women's rights job. issue. Two, one job. Yeah, she'll, she'll definitely be here. be here. I really look forward to meeting you. What's her name? Natalie Hutchins. Natalie Hutchins, really look forward to meeting you. I'm sure she'll give a speech. Of course. Yeah, brilliant. She'd do the very least and come and listen to women in Victoria as the Minister for Women. Of, amazing. Of course she would at least do that. So amazing. Right, we're just waiting for um, Christmas. <laughs> uh, a little bit of building. So, um, this is uh, Melbourne. It's going to be amazing. I can hear the... Let me just do this. I can hear them already. It's going to be a bit windy. It might be a bit tricky on me, my hair. Um, but you know, I, this this is the price I pay for the sacrifices I make for women's rights. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk through in a minute, guys. So. 
Not the hair, exactly, not the hair. That's what I said, not the hair. Like, oh, have you got the full of the... Look at this wonderful outfit, yellow today. <laughs> there we go, beautiful. Yeah, I was hoping for more sunshine so it sparkles more, because oh. otherwise what's the point of rhinestones? It will come, it will come. It's going to be brutally hot today. Is it? Yep. Well, I will be sweating. See, sweating and bad hair, probably <laughs> fluffy hair. Um, So I'm going to keep it on me for a minute. Yeah. I'm Moira. Thanks so much. I'm going to keep it quiet on my... I'm going to do kind of this. Yeah, yes, I think so. No worries. Got it. Oh, I'm already a bit hot. Uh, this is just to keep some anonymity. That's not good for my face. Jesus. My whole face is in the screen. Um, Okay, so I'm going to... Tell me when I can turn it around. Okay. So you've just got a bit of a close-up of my face. Oh, down to 32. Amazing. I don't even know what that is in real money. I never know whether when they say 32 or 37. Okay, whether or not it's um, what it is. I'm just having to do this a bit, guys, just so uh, we're a little bit protected. So in a minute, I'm going to flip the camera around and you can see uh, what we're facing. You can hear it already, I'm sure. But these microphones are quite good. Ah, <laughs> oh, the boys are here, look. Isn't it nuts? Women don't have penises. It's about to, the event's about to start. So all this chaos is to do with the event, I guess. This is a Let Women Speak event. And uh, you've got pro-trans activists on this side fighting against what they say is hate. And you've got people on this side fighting for women's rights. 
And up there, you've got elements of the far right and far left facing each other off. Uh, so a lot of chaos here in Melbourne today, guys. Uh, I don't think I've personally seen this much police on the streets for a long time in Melbourne, but uh, we've got a lot of police, a lot of mounted horses, a lot of cars everywhere, a lot of roadblocks. So I'm going to live stream the, uh, the speaker. That's what I came here to do, to uh, uh, cover this talk here. But obviously everything else that is happening here is on the uh, peripherals of it, but all related as well. So we've got an MP there, David Limbrick here, come to listen as well. Uh, David Limbrick. Yeah. No, no, no. Everybody speaks and then I leave. I don't. I don't speak and leave. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We've told women to leave safely in sort of uh, groups of five. Make sure they're not wearing anything to make them targets. He's holding a, a flag. So he's saying he sees and believes in the transgender thing, so um don't know exactly what he is, but yeah, what his position is. It is. Thank you so much, Morgan. I already have. I've live streamed it. I'm at the point where I don't care how that's perceived because when I see a rainbow flag, when my lesbian friends see a rainbow flag, they don't feel like it's inclusive of them. So I'm not having it. Aren't you wonderfully little? <laughs> If I do the, if I do the, 
Perfect. Thank you for this lady's speak. So if I no, of course not. When will they line up? Still Nobody lines minute. up. Nobody lines oh, up. Do they just put their hand up. And you pick? Yeah, because once awesome. you get a line up, it, it then forces me to... Minutes, There's nothing yeah. else to do to help us stand inside. Okay. Good. Lovely. Yeah. Sir, excellent. Thanks. Well done. So here's okay. the guys that are doing the Hail Hitlers and facing um, against the uh, activists on the other side and members of our Hi. <laughs> So let's go to the actual, actual event. But I'm just going to stand up on those steps and I'm going to wave at all the boys that have come today. Um, oh, we're going to say hello boys to those lovely uh, men and their uh, cheer transfers, as I like to call them, who've come along with. Uh, so I'm just going to stand up on the steps and I think it might make them annoyed, but uh, it's all good fun. So just one moment. Ready? Hello, boys! Hello! Hi, thank you! These people advocate for paedophiles to have access to children. So they are not the fucking same. But they're calling you right wing, we are right -wing. extreme, but you know, extreme fascist. We don't, we, don't, we don't use violence, we never do any crime. Okay. The biggest crime any of us ever commit is drinking raw milk. <laughs> right. That's our biggest crime. Okay. Uh, I'm going to finish and then you say the word tough. And you say it with pride and you forget that it's uh, used against us because actually it simply means that you don't think any woman can have a penis. And that's deliberate. Yeah. What about the uh, women's rights here today? Women's rights, we're all for women's rights then. Yeah. We're, we're all for women's rights. Women, what rights don't women have these days, you know? Yeah. It's the little boys that we have. You absolute beauties. the Aboriginal people as the traditional owners of this land and we pay our respects to elders past and present. Okay, so we are gathered here today uh, before this brand new new religion to refute it and refuse it. It's a quasi-religious, dogmatic cult. And what we're going to say is the words that you can no longer say as you watch your schools indoctrinate your children, as you watch your hospitals mutilate children, as you watch every lesbian space disappear before your very eyes, as you are told the lies that lesbian can have penises. And we say this. No woman has a penis! No... No man has a vagina! Non-binary is absolute nonsense! And transitioning children is the most profound abuse. So, I want to say why we are here, and then the media, whatever lies they might want to tell, can understand why we are here. We are here as women and men, from all sides of the political aisle and none, from all religions and none, to say that we will stand up for the truth and reality, and we don't need any political ideology to do that. We don't need to be on the far side of anything. But we will not lie, and we will not let you lie to our children. We know that what the media will do today is it will talk about two sides. It will talk about two sides of this debate, two aggressive sides battling against each other. And hopefully what normal Australians will see is women trying to speak. And young men and young women who've been sold this lie being desperate to try and stop us from speaking. We are your mothers, we are sometimes your grandmothers, your aunts, your educators, your sisters and your daughters. And we will be heard. In order to speak first, uh, we 
you don't have any preferential treatment, but if you don't have a vagina, a bit like the Titanic, you're right at the back of the queue. If at the end of this we've got room for men, then you will... If at the end of this we've got room for men to speak, then I promise you I will let you. But if you don't, it is women who can't describe what we are. It is pregnant women who go to hospital to be described as birthing persons. It is women in cancer literature described as people with cervixes. You testicular owners, you still get to be called men. You prostate checkers, you still get to be called men. It's not your language that's being destroyed and erased, it's ours. So I, I will ask your forgiveness. Not really, I'm, I don't care. Uh, but I will say that unashamedly, unapologetically, I will, will put women first. And that is every woman. So, if I forget to take the microphone off, will you just do it? Because... Some activists have come here. state and federal publications and does not appear to be affecting men's health communications to the same degree. New South Wales and Queensland Health as well as the federally funded National Cervical Screening Program are now using the term people with a cervix in communications for the general public. When asked why, the response has been that it's a matter of inclusion for individuals who have a cervix but who do not identify as women. This may be well intended, however, many will struggle to read and understand this content. This can actually worsen health inequality. Furthermore, many women find terms like these dehumanising, our lives reduced to a sum of body parts and processes. In a healthcare setting, lack of clarity can have real can have negative real world consequences, especially for women with low health literacy who miss their cervical screening because they did not understand that a message about people with a cervix was for them. The Queensland Women's Health Strategy consultation states that the Women's Health Strategy supports the health of women and girls and will also include, quote, all people who see themselves as a woman or a girl and those who may not see themselves as being either a woman or a man. This means that the Queensland Women's Health Strategy now includes men. Because if it isn't specifically for women, who is it for? The 
overall effect of these linguistic changes in mainstream health communications is the opposite of inclusion. Using confusing, jargon-like terms make health messages more complicated. And by making these changes, it raises the reading level and excludes vulnerable groups of women who need health communications to be as clear and simple as possible. This is especially important for vulnerable populations who struggle to read and understand health information or know which service to use and when, such as women from non-English speaking backgrounds, women with low literacy and women with an intellectual disability. This is not okay. Moreover, the Department of Health has changed the language of health communications without conducting any impact assessment. This is not usual practice. Why is this issue being treated so differently from others? Has anyone asked women how we feel about being referred to as people with a cervix or birthing parents? I am alarmed that there are now calls to adjust sex markers in medical records. Has anyone considered the impact of prioritising gender identity over sex in medicine? Male body and female body people can display different symptoms for the same illnesses and respond differently to medications and require different treatment. The notion that you should be able to change your biological sex in your medical record is worrying and it especially compromises healthcare for people who identify as transgender because they are risking misdiagnosis, missed diagnosis and delayed diagnosis from any resulting confusion. Lastly, if you want to learn more about how de-sexing language compromises health communications, please check out a paper by Kribble et al. It's called Effective Communication About Pregnancy, Birth, Lactation, Breastfeeding and Newborn Care, The Importance of Sex Language. It's published in a journal called Frontiers Global. It's free to read and it's already been viewed by 123,000 people. There is a supplementary file which details many examples of the unintended negative consequences of de-sexing the language of reproductive health care. My last word is that the intersection of sex and gender identity is one of public importance. And so far, the Australian Commonwealth Department of Health has failed to engage well in this. Please write to your MPs and tell them how you feel about this. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Uh, I just wanted, I just want one thing for us to do. I want you to feel that today you made an absolute real world difference. Because for all of you that are here, there are hundreds of people across the country that agree with you but don't feel that they can come. And so I want you to give yourselves a massive cheer. It's so amazing. And right throughout Australia so far, uh, the women here, I it's like you've been saving it for so long because the speeches are so damn good. So in that, in that vein, I'm hoping there's many of you that want to speak. So try and keep it short if you can, because as many voices as possible is great. It will take your voice, maybe only your voice, that can change somebody's mind. They might tune in just at that moment and they'll hear something that they completely chimes with them and make something that they want to do something too. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, who's next? Who'd like to be next? Hello, Melbourne! My first ever rally. Why are we here? We are here because Women like Mary Lee and Mary Colton of the suffragettes fought long and hard for our right to vote. This happened in 19, 1894 in South Australia, but only for some women. This did not, but not all, not until 1962 was that complete. That's when Aboriginal women were finally included in the right to vote. In 2019, the Andrews government and the Greens took our sex-based rights away from us, quietly and stealthily. Women's voices were not allowed to be at the table during this decision. Only the trans voices, Natalie Hudgens, 
You are the Minister for Women in Education! So we did have some uh, activists from the other side infiltrate. What happened? She just fell down. She fell down. So what just happened, as you probably saw on the live stream, is they came. And then a couple of women, uh, one woman in the crowd started shouting at me, are you okay with that? Do you know what? They come and infiltrate here and make women unsafe. I'm okay with that. Let me just say, I'm okay with women being defended. So you have another group that... Hello. Typically comes here to protest against uh, against COVID mandates and lockdowns. They've gone for their march. So it's such a separate group that was here. They've walked off for their march. Um, so you can see. Excuse me, mate. Marshals! Marshals! Can you please come up the front? And we need to create a barrier around this area right now. Marshals, please come forward. All marshals, come forward and create a barrier. Marshals, make sure you identify who are the marshals so that no one else can infiltrate here. Who was that woman chatting at you? I mean, the trans rights activists, they're, they're very persistent. They've uh, infiltrated that group that's speaking here a few times now. A lot of the, a lot of the media's attention, really. Is here a lot of the mainstream media photographers are. Just say, it's absolutely revolting. It should frighten everybody that women talking about our rights and our spaces cannot do it safely, and they think they're on the right side of history. Every single politician that earns money in this building who said absolutely nothing about this. Shame on you! You've got like small women, older women, middle-aged women, menopausal women trying to protect our rights because these stupid young women have no idea what they give up. And can I just say to you young women, you hate us but you will become us! Are you okay? I'm fine, Are you sure? I'm fine. We'll do some ninja next time. Someone. We'll just do some crazy so ninja action. Because, um... Okay, time for me to finish. Natalie Hutchins, you are the Minister for Women and Education. Where were you? You should have stood up for our sex-based rights. In 
1902, the first female-only toilets were built on the corner of Russell and Elizabeth Streets. Thanks today, sorry, today, thanks to the Andrews government and the Greens, we have lost our female-only toilets because of self-ID legislation. And this means any man can self-ID as a woman now and come into what was our toilets, our domestic shelters, our change rooms, female-only shortlists, sports. Basically, any man can utter those magic words, I'm a woman today. And that means any male predator can do this. And they do. They can legally come into our only, what was our only female spaces. That means mothers, grandmothers and daughters. You can have a naked man in your change room. And if you complain, you get kicked out. The law is on their side. Are you kidding me? This is not progressive. This is regressive to women's sex-based rights. They were created for our safety, dignity and privacy. And now the Andrews government and the Greens don't believe we need safety, dignity and privacy. The World Professional Association for Gender Health have pushed affirming care model only. What does this mean? It means when your daughter goes to the doctor and says, I'm trans now, your doctor has to say yes. They send her to the gender clinic and then they start her on a medical path. And we all know how dangerous that is. They are on drugs for the rest of their lives. The hormone blockers have serious side effects. They sterilize the girls. It hinders bone growth, brain development, causes osteoporosis, teeth cracking, mood swings, seizures, lack of sexual pleasure before they even know what that is. These are just a few. Look up the American College of Pediatricians. They have a section that says transgender inter interventions harm children. Testosterone is given to young girls from the age of 16 and up, up to 40 times the normal dose. These side effects are male pattern baldness, sterilization, deepening of the voice, mood swings, heart problems. Women's bodies are not designed for mass doses of testosterone and these side effects are permanent. And it is recorded around the world that they are permanent. As humans, our bodies need to go through puberty in order to develop into an adult. After going through puberty, up to 90% of children that think they are trans realise they're actually gay. They need to go through puberty. Young females as young as 15 are getting double mastectomies and phyloplasties. What's that you ask? It's a surgically made penis. Boys are getting castrated also and having a surgically made vagina. Google their procedures and the side effects. It's horrific. Big Pharma are the ultimate winners in this because once you take these drugs, you're on them for life. So they have a lifetime revenue stream in each new child. This is the greatest scandal in medical history and the Andrews government and the Greens support the medicalization of children. We women of Australia, some of us were born here, some of us came from other lands to call Australia home. We need to stand together and demand our sex rate based rights be given back to us. The media, where are you? Why aren't you telling the truth? Why won't the media speak up for women's and children's safeguards? Predatory men have not disappeared. Ring, email, any politicians, councillors to say we need our female only spaces back. Instead of taking our sex space rights away from us, we need male space, female space, gender diverse space. We are only asking for our right to have our female spaces.
as women, as women, we have fought to, for centuries to gain sex-based rights. The Andrews government and the Greens took it from us. We want our female-only spaces back. Um, it's fun, isn't it? Uh, yes. Did you want to speak next? <laughs> My name is Catherine Dean. of women like me, but I am still standing. I am not silenced and I am stronger than ever. What happened last year brought that issue into every household in Australia. And while we may only number a few hundred here today, I can tell you right now, the majority of Australians who are probably running their kids to sport and doing the chores and doing the groceries today, but they stand with us. And when we look at those children over there who need a shower and to cut their hair and to get a job, I say to them, I will not be silenced. And what we object to, it's not people who a man wants to pop on a frock, knock yourself out, Dave, that's fine. But what we object to is the framework, the legal framework that is being imposed on us by our craven legislature, by our institutions, our media and our organisations that take away women as a legally recognised category. We object to those laws and we say to the people in power who make the decisions, write the policy, write the laws, where are you? Why aren't you standing up for women and girls? Why are you allowing the state to intrude into families and tell parents it's unlawful for them to protect their children? Why are we allowing lesbian spaces to be taken away? Why are we allowing gay spaces to be taken away? This is a dystopian ideology and we must all stand up. And all of you here today who stand with Kelly and stand with all the women who are brave enough to speak, some of whom have never spoken publicly, we say thank you. This is a game changer. We are going to win this. And I will never, ever back Okay, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna motor through. If your speech is longer than longer than three minutes, I really ask you uh, to shorten it. There's loads of women who want to speak, I think it's absolutely vital as many do as possible. So I might start t uh, putting everyone on a, a stopwatch. So do your, do your best bits, uh, do your highlights. That would be great. Thank you so much. Welcome to Melbourne, Kelly J. King. And we're really pleased to have you in this land of the Southern Cross. This is a democracy. We should be able to speak our voices here. Can you hear me? Yep. I've decided it's time to speak up because I've decided that not speaking up feels way, way worse. If we women do not say something, then the other side just pushes further and further and we eventually lose our identities as mothers and women. We've been silenced too long by our workforce by speaking out against a very sinister agenda aim aiming to silence all women. Silenced by so-called experts, silenced as parents and carers, silenced as widows, silenced as single women, 
silenced all say through being ignored and being labelled deplorables. The battle of men dressed up as women and going into girls' change rooms, toilets and participating in women's sport is ultimately, like most things in life, a battle of values. I have a teenage daughter and I don't think it's fair that she has to compete with larger, obviously stronger. Look at this! We're being taken over by communists and socialists in Melbourne, Australia, on the steps of Parliament. This is meant to be a democracy where we can say our piece. Everyone listens to everyone else's point of view. I, and my opinion might not be the same as your opinion, but it should still be able to be heard. And lastly, during puberty, it's normal for a girl to become moody, negative, anxious. It doesn't mean that, uh, that she's um, something else and she shouldn't be tried to be persuaded by psychiatrists that she's something else. Let girls be tomboys. I watch what my kids read and are taught and I see that in the pipeline Bro, oh, they're throwing glass bottles at these guys. Bro, I'm in the middle, man. I'm just getting both sides. Yeah? Say it again, man. Say it again. Why? Why do you call me a Nazi for? What? For protesting lockdowns, I'm a Nazi. You're a white guy calling a Sri Lankan a Nazi. What's wrong with you, man? Are you a racist? Are you a racist? Why are you calling black people Nazis? Why are you calling Sri Lankans Nazis? Look at yourself, man. Look, look at yourself. Why are you walking up to me calling me a Nazi? Look at yourself, man. Look at your privilege. Look at your white privilege. Walking up to a Sri Lankan guy walking, calling him a Nazi. Who do you think you are? Fuck off, man. Get fucked. I'd like to acknowledge that we gather here today on the unceded lands of the Wurundjeri people, the Mugunye Nation, and I'd like to pay my respects to their ancestors and their elders, past, present and emerging. My name is Michelle Uriaro. I am co-founder of Women's Action Group South West Victoria and Manawahiri Korero. not my first time at this place to discuss this issue. I encourage each and every one of you to stand up and speak and challenge this issue. It, is, has, the, it has the potential to take our tamariki away from us, our children, our mokopuna, our grandchildren. As a co-founder of Manawahine Korero, we are very, very concerned we see how this contamination is sweeping through white middle class. Groups of girls are suddenly coming out as non-binary or boys. When will that happen to us? We barely survived the first colonization. This, in our opinion, is the second and we will not lie down. you to say it loud. Two plus two equals five. Two plus two equals five. Alright guys, sorry, two just got a bit heated there. Just some two idiot five. calling me a Nazi. I don't believe in all that white privilege bullshit, but it's always funny when it's these uh, white guys standing over me trying to tell me what I am and who I am just for doing my job because they believe that I should be on their side because of the way I look or something. I'm not, on, I'm not on any side. I have my own views. And I don't, I definitely don't agree with a lot of what I've seen here today from the far left or the far right. But uh, I won't be labeled by these, uh, for lack of a better description, skinny, tall, white blokes calling me a Nazi. 
<laughs> That's bullshit. Our master manipulators. They've manipulated the public to accept home brothels in neighborhoods and allow children of any age to be present in them. They have manipulated the public to accept the total erasure of women's and children's boundaries. They say children can be born in the wrong body. They say transitioning kids makes them happy. They scream inclusion while excluding half the population from our rights. Two plus two equals five. Well, we're here today to break that manipulator's spell. We say there's no such thing as a trans child. We say no to stereotypes and the people who want to enforce them. We know that a child's choice of toys does not define their sex. We know tomboys are girls. And many of them will be lesbians. Double speak is the manipulator's best friend and the ABC and Andrew's government use it to control us. There is nothing more Orwellian than the government's change or suppression practices prohibition act. They kept that one quiet. When they did speak of it, it was always about protecting lesbians, gay men, and bisexuals from conversion therapies that haven't been used in decades. But cynical Danny and his government in the ABC used the lesbian, gay, and bisexuals as the perfect shield for the TQ plus poo in the nest. They weren't protecting us, they were eliminating us. They should have called the trans, they should have called it the Trans the Gay Away Act. They legislated large fines, jail sentences, and parents losing their children for those having the compassion to tell someone come to terms with themselves without medical harm. If a child says they are the opposite sex, no one, not a therapist, not social worker, not parent, nor doctor, is allowed to explore other factors. Depression, anxiety, eating disorders, not a factor. Bullying, abuse, family issues, not a factor. Autism, not a factor. Could the girl be a future lesbian? Not a factor. Does she want to escape the attention of porn adult men and boys? Not a factor. I'm, I'm done. That's it. So close, so close. They say they are, they only say, here are your puberty blockers, hop on the conveyor belt. It is state enforced child abuse, it is state enforced homo hatred, it is state enforced experimentation on the bodies and minds of mostly girls. They are destroying the bodies of a whole generation of lesbians. Dan Andrews, ABC, SBS, Royal Children's Hospital. It is well past time to take your sausage fingers out of your ears. Most of us here are from the left and we are angry. And we know that two plus two equals four. That trans women are just plain old men and that lesbians don't do dick. Look, I want you to look up Acon Expose, aconexplose.org and check out Magdalene Burns videos on YouTube. Oh yeah. Uh, not this, no, I said some, this lady was next. Sorry, I, I just picked people to come out to this lady's next. Can I just remind you why we're here? We're here because we say, no man has a vagina. No woman has a penis. There is no such thing as non-binary. 
visioning children is profound abuse. I'm going to adjust it. So okay. Nice and close. Okay, yep. Hi everyone, um, my name's Kat and I'm going to keep this um, really short. But basically, as an autistic woman, I've just found that this really affects the autistic community. Um, I actually had a best friend and at the age of 33, she um, decided to transition. And um, she started, she was given testosterone shots only after 15 weeks of going to a so-called gender specialist. And she's actually now moved to a regional town in Victoria and she's also she's now running a YouTube channel peddling all this stuff with another a creep show autogynophile. And and everyone else I've known, all the males, they're also actually autistic. And my ex-boyfriend from like 20 years ago in high school is now actually all doing the non-binary thing. So and all the autistic organizations have also been captured as well. And so it's not just the little kids, obviously they're the most vulnerable, but even the adults, the autistic adults, are even dragged into this in their 50s. I've known a guy who's 50 who's now identifying as a woman. All right, that's all I want to say. Thank you. The activists that were on this side, guys, they have left now. A bit tough. I was a member of the Greens for over 10 years. In August 2019, I was emailed by the Greens misconduct panel telling me that they were investigating misconduct allegations against me. I appear to have formed a women's lobby group called the Victorian Women's Guild, which was lobbying against the changes to birth certificate laws in Victoria. And apparently I'd also written a letter to the age. I had to respond to these allegations and I had no more detail than that. Principles of natural justice mean that you should know the substance of the complaints against you when you have to respond to them, but that's not how they do things in the Greens. Finally, after some pushing for particulars of the complaints, I found out that um, the letter to the age was the one which said that the changes to the law could have profound implications for women's only spaces. And maybe women should pay this price of allowing men into women's sports. But we have a right to discuss this. I'd also been quoted in The Australian as saying that women who are survivors of domestic violence and who are prisoners have a right to women's only spaces. This apparently was misconduct. After a long and incompetent process whereby members of the misconduct panel emailed me their internal discussions about my complaint, because that's how competent they are, I was found to have brought the Greens into disrepute and to have vilified transgender people for insisting that women and men are not the same. I've never mentioned the Greens in my advocacy no one could say that when you think of Nina Valens, you think that she represents the Greens. Who the fuck is Nina Valens, really? But nevertheless, sorry, sorry, sorry. I was suspended from the Greens for six months, which is the harshest sanction the Greens have ever handed down since the new misconduct um, process. There were two men who came before the misconduct panel for stalking Greens councillors, guess what they got? 
They got a sanction of a censure, which is a slap on the wrist saying, cut, cut, don't do that again. Jason Fernandez, who was the Assistant Secretary of the Greens, was found to have committed misconduct by leaking confidential information from the disputes panel in order to influence internal elections. Guess what Jason Fernandez's censure was? He just got a censure. And lastly, I'd like to speak about Bianca Haven, B Haven, also known as the Haven system, pronouns she and it. He was found to have committed misconduct. He defended Nazis. He defended child rapists and he defended incest on his Twitter feed. And these horrible comments were interwoven with lots of commentary about the internal processes and meetings of the Greens. The misconduct panel found that he risked to bring the Greens into disrepute. Not that he did, but just risked. And guess what his sanction was? He got a censure. They said, tut, tut, we think you don't know how to use the internet properly. Shame on you, do better. I was suspended from the Greens for saying that women deserve women's only spaces, but a Nazi sympathiser remains in the Greens, is able to run for high positions within the Greens. Shame on the Greens! We are on the right side of history. Well, I'm glad Melbourne's media are here today to watch the two sides because whilst we're here just talking about the things that we want, the rights that we need to protect, they're trying to break through police lines. What are they going to do? What do they want to do to us? Do, we, do they think we're going to be afraid? Many of us have pushed eight or nine pound babies through our vaginas. Some of you more crazy women will have refused any pain relief. Some of us haven't slept for six months because we got night sweats. You want to scare us, boys? You want to scare us? Tell us that you're cancelling chocolate. I really am at the point where this is the hill upon which I am prepared to die. religious even though I'm a proper gold star atheist but I do feel like saying forgive them father for they know not what they do these girls let me tell you girls you cannot bend on your knee for long enough to be forgiven you may be killed last but they will kill you you may save yourself a little bit of precious time. You are no different to women who augment their breasts and stick crap in their ass. You are no different to those women. You perform the patriarchy. The patriarchy you claim to stand against. In fact, a Kardashian is at least a little more honest. Anyway. Next. You next. Really close. Hi, Marvin. I have prepared three short, short works of fiction. Number one. In the late 1920s, a man named Einar Wegener went to his doctor in Denmark and said he'd like to become a woman. His doctor said, don't be silly, Ina. Humans can't change sex. 
of activist lesbians addressed the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women uh, in favour of lesbians, women's and girls' human rights. Because uh, we all know that women's human rights are based on sex, which was removed from the um, Sex Discrimination Act. Now, the 21 census was an interesting one. They, they included a question on non-binary, uh, and, and they could tick non-binary in the sex section of the 21 census. And at the end, the um, Bureau of Statistics said that um, they didn't collect enough useful information because people um, defined non-binary in lots of different ways and it was, did not provide data of high enough quality to be used. And there is a, a consultation on the wording of the 26th census right now, which I would love you all to go and give your two months worth. Um, Sel Grover and her Google app 
she's, she's including lesbians there, but of course um, lesbians who say that they will not include men with penises in their dating app are uh, reviled by the people who are trying to stop uh, giggle from happening. Jessica Hoyle in Tasmania has had an anti-discrimination finding against her because she wanted to have a lesbian only night once a month at a nightclub and the anti-discrimination commissioner thought that she might be wanting to peer into the underpants of the people attending that, uh, that event to see if they were men or not. I belong to Sappho's party. We, we tried to, we were holding gatherings um, in uh, 2004 and 2009 and um, we were taken to the South Australian um, Human Rights Commission and forbidden to advertise our, our um, meetings publicly. Victoria, if you are a psychologist who wants to take a non-affirmation approach to dealing with your clients and say, let's look at all the issues in your life. At the moment, you are uh, liable to a 12-year jail sentence and a $20,000 fine. And just in the words of Judy Small, we're going to keep on walking forward. Keep on walking forward, keep on walking forward, never turning back, never turning back. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Moira?
me. I've got so much money I could do that. Every single one of you that bought a t-shirt has contributed to my millionaire jet set lifestyle. So be warned, because I've got a very handsome and expensive lawyer. Okay, who did I say? Yes. I'll let you go next. You're next. It's just so many women want to speak. Uh, those people over there, the police are facing you because you're the bloody bad guys. I condensed it. I said basically in the beginning that I was raised on the tolerant left. I used to be an ally. So like most, when COVID hit, I ended up chronically online. It was during that time that I finally saw just how deranged the left had become. But there was no way around it. My tolerant left had gone and lost its fucking mind. Trading in tolerance chips for totalitarianism. For some shut up, get on your knees and comply. Misogyny, that slimy hand around women's throats that I saw as a child. Misogyny had had a revamp. It was glamorous now, all sparkly. It had some flags and new allies. Violent beta males wearing hankies on their faces, giving a wink and a nod to their comrades while screaming down women who just don't fancy having girl dick shoved in their daughter's faces in the change rooms at the pool. Their green-haired 20-something female conspirators feeling righteous while shielding trans-identified men who'd raped little girls and then had their chance with female inmates while imprisoned with them against their will. Freshly anointed trans women athletes mopping the tracks and stalls of the blood, sweat and tears of female athletes who they'd beaten, those tirelessly dedicated women from whom they'd stole. Women were just a feeling. We weren't mothers anymore, we were birthers. I hadn't breastfed for three long fucking years. Sore and overtouched breasts, loving but dazed and tired from sleepless nights. I chest fed for inclusion. Our lesbian and gay friends weren't allowed same-sex attraction. Their orientation was just a genital preference for backwards boomers, too vanilla and hate-filled to, to enjoy someone's vagina without wincing or take that organic strap because it's real and so it's better, ladies. Now suck it. Pedophiles had had a rebrand too. Minor attracted people they were, stunning and brave and here to stay. And if we made a peep about it, we were all right fascists or the slightly lesser charge alt-right fascist adjacent because apparently safeguarding children is violent. Protecting their little bodies is far right. I used to be an ally, but now after having my compassion as a woman weaponized against me, being abused by filthy misogynists and their tragic brainwashed handmaidens, watching our lesbian sisters have to fight again for men to get the fuck out of their bedrooms and social spaces. Reading of countless women and children getting raped and discarded by decrepit autogynophiles wearing woman face like it's our skin and watching all of those trans folks and trans allies kick back and just deny, deny, deny. Denouncing detransitioners like they were the new suppressive persons and thus all but the scum of the earth. Yet not a word about the sick and twisted men claiming womanhood who were harming us, representing them in their name no less. And not a side glance, of course, at all the trans-identified women and girls. Forcing nothing, forcing no one save for the muscle and sinew to be cut from their bodies for the sake of simulacrum. It's funny that. I'll politely state for the record it's my preference not to be called a cis woman. I don't qualify my existence in relation to another's. Which is especially the case for narcissistic Trojan horses. I will be referred to as a woman, as a female, as a feminist, and not their brand of feminist, but my own. Because women far stronger than us fought long and hard for us to be standing here, and there isn't a misogynist alive who has the chops to change my mind. But they'll call me a turf regardless, and I'm at the point where I just don't fucking care. Your ad hominems, they're no good here. You can't cash in that guilt by association. Your redirections, projections, smear campaigns, mistruths, and flying monkeys all course. They all alter course and land squarely back on you because reality defines who I am, who we are. I exclude no females from that shared reality, not one. All are welcome here and welcome to return, even those handmaidens 
especially the handmaidens, because they won't always be safe from those pitchforks that they're wielding. They're not men, so they're disposable. And if they speak out in turn, then they'll get turned on too. We've been through worse and we've survived because we're women, we're built different, we're observed, not assigned. And nothing enrages a misogynist more than a woman saying no while insisting that she knows her own mind. I can tell you. Uh, but we have these police on horseback. We don't need to throw ourselves underneath them. We can see the symbolism of these horses holding back those that will do us harm. Oh God, it feels good to be a woman. It feels good in a way that all you pill-popping penis havers, you will never understand the solidarity of women. I even feel blessed to have had periods because it annoys you. <laughs> to have the bruising pain of growing breasts makes me, just reminds me that you didn't have it. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Kelly J. Hi everyone, I'm Stasia Fry. Some of you have been watching Turf Talk Down Under, I think. Now, you might think that I've dressed up today as a transgender activist. And you're right, I have. But don't be deceived by this, this uh, unicorn horn. It's actually a female penis. A female penis sticking out of my head. My pronouns are dickhead. Only a dickhead like the Victorian Minister for Equality, Harriet Shing, would think it's a good idea to put men convicted of rape and sexual assault in women's prisons. Only a dickhead like the head of the Australian Sports Commission, Kieran Perkins, would claim there would be human carnage unless men are allowed to compete in women's swimming. Yeah. Only an absolute dickhead, like Victorian Premier Dan Andrews, <laughs> would claim that no one can point to a problem with regards to transgender laws. Well, Dictator Dan, I can point to more than several problems, but the main ones are dickheads in women's change rooms, homophobic trans dickheads, sexually harassing lesbians and gays, and dickhead doctors sterilising children. So to all the dickheads, processing us here today, I say, you are not valid, you are not on the right side of history, and you do not have the moral high ground. You are bullies. Although bully is too soft a word to describe your behaviour, you are tyrannical, malignant narcissists. And your reign of terror will not last. You are the bloody fascists. These dickheads think we hate them because they're trans. Wrong. We hate them because they are tyrannical bullies. We hate them because they won't take no for an answer. For example, Callum Hannah Mountie, a man 
was told to stop using the women's change rooms and he refused. And then this guy had the balls to claim he was the victim. To Callum, Hannah, Mountie and all the dickheads like him, I say, stop being a dickhead, mate! Yeah. Woo. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, you're very, very welcome. Very welcome. Yes. Uh, this lady. I thank you so much. Okay. Just... Yeah, be sure. Um, how are you? Um, I wanted to say four, four really quick things. One, I come down from Ballarat. <laughs> Mayor Des Hudson, Ballarat Council, the Greens, the Rainbow Local Government Lobby, and the Labor Women, pull your attack dog off lesbian women in Ballarat. That man has been after us since September when Ballarat Council put out for public con fuck, consultation an LGBTQIA plus inclusion plan that said that lesbians are people who identify as women who are attracted to other people who are identify as women and we said no and Sean Mulcahy has been going after us ever since. One, two, John, John bloody, what's his name? ABC, can't give his name. John Fane, John Fane, please, come on mate, you are not dumb. Help us out here. Three, can we all just have a moment and not think about men? Let's shake it off. Shake it off. Woo! We're not thinking about men, we're thinking about us. Thank you if you're here, thank you if you're watching. Kelly J, thank you. I'm a woman of the left. I got harassed because I was going to come here, but this is about solidarity. It doesn't matter what walk of life you are. You were born female, and that is the only thing. That is the only thing that we are talking about here in this space. We matter. That's all we're asking is to be respected, and that that it's so hard in 2023, and that we need riot police to protect us is outrageous. The last thing I'd like to say is, can you please, with me, when I say I am woman, you know what to say. Hear me roar, okay? I am woman. Hear me roar. Thank you. Oh, my God. Uh, no political side or party is on our side. Not one of them. So if your allegiance is, is with the left or the right, then your allegiance is not with women first. It has to be women first. It's only by standing together that we get to defeat this. If you allow ideology, if you are governed by any political ideology above this, then we cannot stay united and win because we will find division. Really important. Thank you for coming and standing with people that you may not, dis may not agree. It's so important. Women first, politics second. Okay, who was waiting? Thank you so much. You're very, very welcome. Here. Hi. Hello, I'm Jennifer, and I've been waiting for bloody years to get up here and speak. Woo! I am so sick of this. I can't believe that we have riot police having to protect women from a bunch of people that are deluded. It's disgusting. I just want to thank Kelly J for coming all the way from England to be here with us and give us support because we really need it. I want to thank all the women and men that are here for you're so brave and thank you. Um, and also the organisers, thank you very much. I just want to say firstly, like really basically, I, um, that men who identify as women are biologically men. Women who identify as men are biologically women. A woman is an adult human female with double X chromosomes and the potential to produce large gametes, right? Eggs, that's what we do. Sex is a binary reality for all mammals on earth and you can't change your sex. 
just so we're absolutely clear. And to be pro-women's rights does not equate with being anti-trans or transphobic. Wake the fuck up, seriously. In 2015, I woke up. I was like these knobs over here. I actually believed that we needed to embrace everybody with whatever way they wanted to express. And that's true, like I'm accepting of people. But as soon as you start to take female spaces, that's when I started to wake up. That was when Caitlyn Jenner <laughs> had won Glamour Magazine's Woman of the Year Award. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? How could a person who'd been a wealthy, privileged man <clears throat> for 60-something years and had only been called a woman for less than a year suddenly become woman of the year? More of a woman than women that have been women and females since conception. I just wanted to have a look and see what happened. And then I found the most unbelievable amount of stuff. And the fact that men are getting into women's spaces. Men are invading women's spaces. And they're getting into prisons. They're impregnating, raping and assaulting women. They're getting into rape and domestic violence crisis centres. And they're attacking women. They're stalking them. They're, they're actually getting into care positions. And they're actually having um, a say of whether they're going to touch women who are infirm disabled, it's disgusting. These women, anybody who sp spoke out and said, we don't want you to touch us, they've been called transphobes. These women are not allowed, like, they've been gaslit, they've been told if you don't submit to this gender ideology, you're transphobes, you're bigoted, you're not allowed to protect yourself, you're not allowed to use that thing that you learned from when you were a young woman and you went, okay, that person over there looks dodgy, I don't want them anywhere near me. You are, you are meant to suck it up and let it happen, right? It's disgusting. Um, I just also want to say, um, I also want to talk about the trans thing because I know I come from an area of Melbourne where there are so many kids that are really, really troubled, okay? And they're being told that it's, if, you're, if you really, really like pink, you must be a girl. If you really, really like blue, you must be a boy. They're confused. When they get to be teenagers, this is the end of childhood. They're, they're killing something off. They're moving into adulthood. But they try, what they've been told is to kill off their womanhood, kill off their manhood, and then turn into something else. It's not, it's not sustainable. Um, they're being told that gender, which is a mishmash of feelings, personality, and social construction, is reality, and it's not true. They're giving kids the ability to make consent about things that they have no idea what they're consenting to. I just want to finally say, because I know there's other people want to speak, I'm here because I care about protecting women's rights and the protection of our children. If people want to present as a masculinized or feminized version of themselves in the world, that's their business and it's got nothing to do with me. But when men try to appropriate the messy, wonderful, rich, powerful world of femaleness, by laughing stereotypical feminine tropes and they invade our spaces and erase our language, I say, no way. When kids have been encouraged by the government and social media influencers to disassociate from their bodies, medicalize and mutilate themselves, and they're still learning what it is to be a fucking human being, I say, no way. And this has to fucking stop. Okay. Two more. Yep. Thank you. It's got to be short. Thank you. Okay. So sorry. No, no, I feel helpful. First, I was a swerf, and now I'm a turf. And that's because I believe that women are full, valuable female human beings. But the consumption of the female body has been marketed to women and society has bought it. Have we seen the delightful sign back there? Trans whore power? How is that powerful? Did we see the female protesters come in? How does taking your shirt off and showing your breasts, nothing wrong with breasts, or women, have them, but how does that empower you? Women have been conditioned to see prostitution as empowering, pornography, surrogacy. 
but empowerment of the unanimated female body drags every other woman a little bit closer to the event horizon of tits without humanity. Is it any wonder that women have now become meat suits that anyone, any man can dress up as if a woman is made more powerful somehow by being used, that it becomes a good thing for her to disappear? And so all the young girls coming of age, all the autistic girls, all the lesbian girls, all the girls who do actually want boys they like to be attracted to them, they have been given a piece of shit for womanhood and they have been told that it is Shinola. Is it any wonder that they not only don't want to be women anymore, they actually believe that they can tinker with their bodies and literally stop being one. I don't want the product that I have been told to sell. Our Melbourne Royal Children's Hospital Gender Service is the largest in the country. They see children up to their 16th birthday and have patients with interventions recorded as young as three. It is over 70% girls seeing the Melbourne Clinic, and this is from an historical average of boys mainly facing with gender dysphoria, 80% who turned out to be healthy gay men when they growed up. Now it's 70% girls with high rates of mental health problems, bullying, ADHD, mild to severe autism, about half present with autism. But in 2019, at the Royal Commission into Mental Health in Victoria, the head of the clinic, Dr Telfer, lobbied for long-term secure funding so they could give double mastectomies in that clinic. She cited an American study where mastectomies were performed on girls from the age of 13, saying that the study found decreased levels of chest dysphoria once the girl's breasts were removed. Well, funny that. Why would a girl feel more comfortable? So as male author Andrea Longshu says, while he's claiming to be a woman, femaleness is a universal sex defined by self-negation, making room for the desires of others. He thinks he can inhabit us because we will empty ourselves to make room, and I say, I am full. I'll be really quick. Um, I just want to put a call out to the people who aren't here today because there's been a lot of talk about the right side of history. But the thing is, they think they're on the right side of history too. And if we don't step up, speak up and fight, they can win. And they get to determine what history is and we will be the bigots. So I know there's a lot of reasons to not be here, whether you're scared of losing friends or your job, or if you're attached to your left-wing identity and don't want to speak out. If you just couldn't be bothered doing the research and figuring out why we're actually standing here, but we need you, we need your voices. I believe Kelly J when she says she never loses, but she needs people standing here. So I'm begging you, if you're sitting on the internet and just observing and saying nothing, not even being able to put up a blooming social media post, where the fuck are you? We need you! Okay, so we came here today to say women don't have penises! No man has a vagina! There is no such thing as non-binary! And transing children is abuse! We break the silence, boys! You may think you win, you may think you intimidate us, but we say to each and every one of you, fuck off! <laughs> We are absolutely sick and tired of it. Women have had enough. We raise teenagers. We don't need to be bothered about what you silly children say on the streets. So, to those people that came here today, if you can stand next to someone 
even though you know that there is precious little with which you agree, except that women deserve human rights and our spaces and our dignity, then I promise we will win. If you can ignore those who repeatedly ask for your purity over and above your commitment to women's rights, then I promise we will win. It's a little bit cringy, but it kind of works. And do you know why else we're going to win? Say it with me, very loud, because I never lose! Thank you to all the women that organised, thank you to Stuart, uh, thank you to each and every one of you that felt brave enough to come here, thank you to the morons opposite who brought the press, and thank you very much to Melbourne Police for keeping women safe this afternoon. We know that you didn't join the police force to stop blue-haired morons from attacking middle-aged women, but we appreciate it. Thank you very much.